Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on That Game Review Show. I am James, and I assume you noticed that this is not the Devil May Cry 5 review. This is the Devil May Cry 5 pre-review. So why am I doing an off-the-cuff pre-review? Well, work has been kind of kicking my butt in terms of scheduling, and I really, really, really want to get a Devil May Cry 5 video out there. I am working on the real Devil May Cry 5 review. The script is about 17 pages long. For context, the script for Devil May Cry 4 was about 8 pages, I believe. So it's about double the length, and that video was already like 35 minutes, so this video will easily be over an hour long. So yeah, I just need some extra time to work on it. Anyways, for today's video, I do want to at least talk about some of my basic impressions of Devil May Cry 5, and, you know, just kind of, it's a pre-review. I'm not going to go super in-depth on what I feel, but I am going to talk about it. And I do want to put right here, massive, massive spoilers ahead. This game is a little over a week old, actually... Based off the time, 12 days old. So yeah, the game has not been out for that long. Uh, I have beaten it two times through, technically. Um, three if you count the secret ending you can get during the first mission. But I'm not going to really talk about that much. So really, I was super excited about this game, and it fulfilled basically every single expectation I had, which was the original goal of the game. Uh, Hideaki Atsuno, the ballsy fucker, said in an interview, I believe, that it will exceed all, ex all, yeah, all expectations, and I believe he did. Uh, there are things that I feel like it, felt short on, it fell short on, but there's also a lot of things I feel like it vastly ex exceeded. I'm sorry, I'm recording this after work and I... I'm a little, a little tired. Um, so yeah, be sure to keep in mind there's going to be a lot of stuttering and just messing up words. It's been a long day. Anyways, from the get-go, the uh, gameplay is really, really good. It's very responsive. Um, all the combos you get are really good. Uh, Nero himself gets way more combos than he had in 4. That, on top of the Devil Breakers, really, really improves his gameplay ability. Uh, later on through the game, actually the very last mission, Nero gets a Devil Trigger, and that just improves his gameplay even more. Uh, you know, it acts the same as, let's say, Dante's does, where it's a gauge it fills up, and when he activates it, it's like his stand in 4 where it attacks with him. And actually, at the end of the final mission, he gets his buster back, so he can grab enemies and slam them. And that's really cool. It does completely uh, deter one of the Devil Breakers, that being the buster arm, It, which did the exact same thing. Actually, it even uses the same animations, if I'm not mistaken. So that does kind of ruin that, especially because that's an expensive devil arm. So I'm really glad I didn't buy a bunch. But yeah, uh, Nero in general is just vastly improved from 4. And I can definitely appreciate that. Because I thought, after a while, Nero got really boring in 4. Dante himself plays basically exactly the same as he does in 4. And I'm okay with that, which is basically just an upgraded version of 3. The fact that you can pick and choose what weapons you want to have equipped at any one time vastly, vastly improves how you can play as him. I mostly played it like Devil May Cry 3, just having two of the, I believe, seven Devil Arms equipped at one time. So I would mostly just string. You have to have one of the main swords equipped at any point. So I usually had the sword and um, uh, Cerberus and the, by Cavalier. 
uh, Cerberus and Cavalier, I just switch between those every once in a while, mostly sticking with Cerberus. But I actually played with Cavalier quite a bit. Anyway, so that was Vast Saint Crew. Once you beat, I believe it's Son of Sparta mode, which is hard mode, you do get the option of equipping every single weapon at the same time, and that is the best. I only played with it for a few minutes on the Void, which is the training arena. Uh, I, I'm not going to put uh, relevant gameplay on screen. I hope you, I, uh, I hope you can understand. Um, but yeah, you can not really updates. But yeah, Dante in general is just vastly improved, especially with the newest uh, sword he gets, that being the Devil Sword Dante. It creates like spectral swords that you know attack alongside the main sword. And it's it's great, honestly. It it makes sense that Dante's summon swords would be more melee focused, whereas Virgil's are definitely more range focused. It I just feel like it makes sense. And the final character, you know, is V, uh, who we find out in the game. And again. I want to put out there, spoilers, massive spoilers for Devil May Cry 5, you have been warned. Uh, v, who is just one half of Virgil, uh, his human half, uh, he plays way, way differently than uh, Dante and Nero do. He has two demons, that being Griffin and Shadow from Devil May Cry 1, along with Nightmare. He has them attack, and then he has to like zoom in with his cane and murder things. Yeah, his gameplay is way different. It's actually kind of hard, but it's also like the best because you can like spam double trigger all the time. Because double trigger is nightmare, so it'll just boom in and just murder everything. It's the best. Like I'm not even joking. It is the actual best, especially because you can like read a book to. Uh, fill up the double trigger gauge faster. It's great, but he only has two different uh, poems he reads, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, I believe the poetry he reads is William Blake, but I'm not entirely sure on that. I may have to look into that, because I kind of liked some of the shit he was reading. But yeah, overall, V is way different than Nero and Dante and he does a really <laughs> he does a really good job murdering things considering he's you know a cripple and not even he has like very little demon energy because he's supposed to be the human half of Virgil uh, when Virgil separated the human half from the demon half uh, in fact it doesn't make sense why he'd have any demonic energy left but that is besides the point uh, the Probably the big point people look at is going to be the graphics, and the graphics look absolutely amazing. The RE engine, it, it looks outstanding. Uh, I don't want to say photorealistic, because it's not quite there, but it is very close, at least close enough to be like, whoa, that looks really, really good. <laughs> and it does. Uh, you can just look at the gameplay I have on screen, and it looks awesome. The music itself is great too. This is one of the only games that I actually like really listen. Oh, I'm sorry. It's one of the only games that I actually really listened to while I was playing. Because, uh, you know, it's Devil May Cry. You kind of have to. And overall, I really liked the game soundtrack. Uh, you know, Double Trigger, which is Nero's battle theme. You can't go wrong. I've been listening to that a lot since the game was announced. Subhuman, I never really had an issue with that song, and I do really like the rendition they have in the game, which is Dante's battle theme. And V's theme, I don't remember what the name is offhand, but I still think it's really good. <laughs> the final boss theme, so, uh, Silver Bullet, it's basically a remix of Double Trigger, and I fucking love it. It is the actual best. And this final boss is really good too. I. Uh, it's Nero versus Virgil, uh, father versus son, and that's really fucking cool. Oh, and this is where Nero gets the bombshell that Virgil is the daddy. Uh, so, yeah. Can't believe Dante would keep that from him, but, you know, now he knows. Um, 
with the timeline change, I don't know exactly when this takes place in the timeline. Well, it takes place at the very end, but I don't know if it's a few years after 4. It could be like it could be like a decade after 4. I just don't know. It's really hard to tell with the different art styles, too, because you can't be like, man, Dante looks, you know, five years older. Like, no, Dante in the last game looked anime. <laughs> so it, it's, it is kind of hard to tell. But I do want to say uh, the art style change was definitely good, and it did help kind of bring in the feel of the reboot. Because, you know, uh, Itsuno was like, yeah, man, I like the reboot, and I agree with him. So yeah, it, it did feel kind of nice. I do like that uh, Nero throughout the game is a little more aggressive with his shit. And it does kind of bring in like a different layer of who he is compared to like Dante and Virgil. He's a lot more like reboot Dante. He's definitely very mouthy, swears a lot. I'm cool with swearing, but the reboot was a little excessive. But this, it doesn't seem like excessive it does feel very tasteful with how they do it and I definitely appreciate that okay what else uh, overall the story was really good um, it actually I wouldn't say really good it was decent there are a lot of things that would change like we don't really get to interact with many of the characters that often but for a game that really that is ending off the sons of Sparta saga it does not put a whole lot of emphasis on the characters that's good and bad. Um, it, it probably put as much emphasis as 3 did, but the cast of characters is so much larger than 3. Because with 3, it was basically Dante, Virgil, Lady, and Arkham. Whereas the 5 is Nero, Nico, Dante, Lady, Trish, V, Virgil. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's more characters. And I really did like the renditions of the old characters in this. Trisha's character design, I'm still not huge on, but uh, Lady looks great. I think Nico looks great. Their alternate costumes suck. <laughs> uh, that's, that's an alternate costume, though. You don't have to deal with it. Yeah, it was, a, it was a shame not to see more of these characters interacting. Though the interactions between Dante and Virgil at the very end are the literal best. And also when Nero's Devil Trigger just some fucking bitch slaps Dante and he's like, ah, bitch slap almost killed me. If, if I think about it, I'll put this clip up. But I'm probably just going to put just one long gameplay clip. Anyways, I think I'm going to end it. Um, I kind of covered everything. Gameplay, story, graphics, music. I can't really think of anything else I can add to this except for the fact that I did really enjoy this game. I haven't played it much since my second playthrough. Uh, like I said, I did get the secret ending you can get for uh, beating Gerizin at the very beginning. But overall, yeah, I've, I really had a good time. The Platinum Trophy seems impossible to get because you have to get S ranks on every single mission and every difficulty. That's going to be really hard to do. This is going to be a long haul for me 100%ing it. <laughs> And, you know, that's good. I, I bought the Deluxe Edition, so I'm definitely going to get my money's worth. Actually, I guess that, too. With the Deluxe Edition, you get, like, live-action cutscenes, and they look awesome. Like, awesomely bad. It's the best. I don't think I'd play through the game with them on the entire time, but I've watched a few of them, and they do look pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's just fucking funny, some of the shit they pull. Oh, I need to give full credit to the motion capture cast and the voice acting cast because uh, they're different crews uh, everyone did a really good job just overall uh, there are some moments where the speech and everything's a little stilted and I think that's mostly just like translation error trying to fit in and change things but yeah I think they did a really good job I think uh, Ruben Langdon as Dante was really toned down in this and I did just want to see more Dante in general, to be honest. But yeah, uh, Johnny Young Bosch as Nero did a really good job. Uh, Daniel Southworth as Virgil was really good. I do miss his more like nasally voice, Dante. 
which, uh, you know, whatever. Um, he, he is older in this, so it doesn't make sense. And the reason Daniel Salford sounded like that in 3 was apparently he had like a cold while he was recording it, so his nose was all fucked up. I don't remember the names of any of the other voice cast, and that's really unfortunate. But they all did a really good job, too. I think Trish's overall performance was not that great. God, I, I think I've come to the realization, I don't like Trish that much in this game. I hate to say it. I like Trish, just not in this game. I love her in 4. In 4, she was the best. But, um, yeah, in this one, I don't know. I don't know about her. But uh, the actress that did Lady, they did a really good job. And Nico, it's kind of hard to not love Nico. Uh, especially her relationship dynamic with Nero. It's definitely uh, definitely a playful relationship, and I enjoy that. Anyways, for a pre-review, this is going on pretty long. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I don't know when I will have the actual review out. Uh, it might be a little while. Work's been really, really hectic with everything. Plus, I still have to, like, do a lot of stuff. So, yeah, I'll try to talk to Terrell and Crab about tweaking the schedule a bit. But, yeah, it's... It's a very daunting task. <laughs> daunting. Yeah, it's like Dante. Uh, this is why I shouldn't do unscripted content. But, yeah, it it's gonna definitely kick my butt. It's going to be easily over an hour long, uh, maybe closer to an hour and a half, and that's a very scary thought because I haven't really started working on it. Because uh, I hate to keep saying it, but work has been hectic. Um, so, yeah, and I want to do it right. I don't want to try to half-ass it to try to get it out at a certain time, so I'm definitely going to maybe work on other projects in the meantime so I can push that project further back. Because with having this out, it will help that buffer a little bit so we can at least get some of the traffic from the popularity of the game at the moment. If you don't want to hear any of that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please let us know down below. Because uh, I think Terrell did a video like this once, but it wasn't formed as like a pre-review. Uh, but yeah, let, let us know how you enjoy this. Uh, I would say like leave a like and everything. Yeah, leave a like, whatever. Do do what you need to. Uh, let me know your thoughts about Double May Cry 5. I definitely want to know what people thought about it. Would I say it's my favorite Double May Cry game? I don't know. But I do really love the game, and the more I think about it, the more I enjoy it. So, I'd say... I'd probably have to let it sit with me for a while, because God of War, it took me a while to realize my full thoughts on it. Uh, so yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to think about it for a while to decide whether or not it is my favorite. As I say right now, it's pretty evenly set with three. Yeah. Enough rambling. I will see you all next time. Uh, like I said, skeleton. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, scheduling issues, I don't know who's going to be next, so we will figure it out. Have a good one.